Welcome back to the Ultimates tier list series. This time we're going to be ranking every assassin in Smite based on the power, versatility, utility and stats of their ultimates. Of course this is my own opinion, but it's well informed and as I said is based solely on their ultimates. I'm not ranking these gods based on overall power or place in the meta. A very weak god currently may have a very strong ultimate and hence it will be high on the list despite the god's weak overall performance. And quickly before we start, be sure to join the community discord if you haven't already for Smite talk and chill with like minded people. And of course, subscribe for more of these videos if you do find yourself enjoying it. But let's jump right in with the tier list. So in alphabetical order, Arachne would be first. I think Arachne ultimate is B+. Plus. I was going to put this in B, but having a look at some of the damage that the ability does and the actual stats on it, I think it's a little bit better than B. It's not the most amazing ultimate given it's mostly used to run away or potentially chase a kill. The damage on it is better than I thought, which is like I said why it's not in B and it's in B+, plus instead. But to be honest, it's not amazing. And it provides almost no CC, just a little bit of a slow when you land. Compared to a lot of other assassin ultimates, this one just isn't that great. Now, Awilix's ultimate is also in B+, plus for me, but it's sort of different to Arachne's ultimate in a way. Awilix's ultimate isn't straight up bad, it is more reliant on your composition, which is why I don't think it's much higher than B+. Plus. It could potentially be A as well, I think. Awilix's ultimate with zero knockups and zero jumps on the enemy team is obviously like C tier garbage, but if you have a really good comp built around it with like a Geb on your team or a Bacchus or something like that, it can be very powerful. Hence why I think it's sort of middle of the road, B+, plus, maybe A. Of course, you can use a Willix ultimate without pulling someone, and you can also pull someone directly off of your own knockup, but having a comp built around it really makes it so much better. Bakasura, A+. This one's kind of hard to evaluate, since the ultimate itself, if you look at just the ultimate, doesn't really do all that much. It just activates a slow and a cripple, gives you AoE auto attacks, and summons a few minions that deal a bit of damage, but when you consider the rest of Bakasura's kit and how much damage his auto attacks actually do, this ultimate is very powerful because it gives you AoE to hit multiple people and traps those multiple people and stops them getting away with the slow and cripple. This is really one where if you looked at Bakasura's ultimate in a vacuum, you would call it complete trash, but because of the rest of Bakasura's kit and the synergies that he has, this is definitely an A-plus ultimate. Bastet, B tier. For those of you that know me, you know I really don't like Bastet's ultimate and think it needs a rework. For the first 10 minutes of the game, Bastet's ultimate is like S tier, and then after 10 minutes it becomes C tier, that's why it's in B for me. If you're in the super early game where the cats are quite hard to kill and they can put out a lot of damage in a long duration slow, this ultimate can be really strong. But after maybe 10 or 15 minutes into the game, a mage can pretty much one or two shot your cats and they're basically useless considering it's an ultimate. And for me, an ultimate that doesn't last more than 10 or 15 minutes into the game is just complete garbage. Camazots, B+. So this ultimate just does damage. It does a hell of a lot of damage, which is why it's not in like B or C tier and it's in B+, but that's all it does. It provides no CC, I mean I guess it provides some utility in that you have a self banish and CC immunity for a long duration which can be very powerful. But for me I like a bit more than just some damage on my ultimates, it can be great for like diving backlines and things like that but for me I don't really like Kamazot's ultimate that much. Daji ultimate, this one I had a little bit of a hard time rating but I'm going to put it in A tier I think. But I think this could definitely be B plus or A plus depending on how you want to rate it. It does quite a lot, the damage it does is decent, the pull is obviously great and can potentially force beads or a CC immune ultimate out of people which is really strong. But it can often be slightly hard to use in some cases, people can jump away from the chains and you can't hit them or you could simply miss the chains because the travel time is fairly long on them. I'm not saying you'll miss them all the time, but often you won't hit all three chains, whereas if you compare this to another pulling type ultimate like Ares for example, Ares ultimate is basically impossible to miss. Fenrir ultimate, A tier again. This one is just a generically pretty good ultimate, I feel like it's definitely on the point of balance. It does quite a lot of damage and has a really long duration CC that can set up for your teammates and things like that, but it is single target, you're not going to be hitting multiple people with a Fenrir ultimate unless you're hacking. <laughs> Moving on to Hun Bat's ultimate, S+. Plus. I know it's probably not hard for most of you to figure out why Hun Bat's ultimate is S tier, but I'll give it a quick explanation anyway. You can hit up to 5 people with a massive long duration fear that fears them straight into walls and just gets them blown up by the rest of your team. That's pretty much a summarization of why I think Combat Soul is really fucking good. Granted, the damage on it isn't amazing. It's actually higher than a lot of people think. People think this ability does like 50 damage, but it actually adds up to about maybe 400 or so if you keep them in the fear for a long duration. But it really is just the CC factor of this ultimate that makes it so incredibly strong. Kelly, A+. So this is another one like Bakasura, where if you looked at the ultimate in a vacuum, you would call it complete garbage because all it does is really a tiny bit of damage and prevents you from dying for a few seconds. But in the context of the rest of Kelly's kit, with her insane DPS on the auto attacks being able to shred people down and that massive heal on the passive, it becomes a really powerful ultimate when it's part of her overall kit. Loki, A tier. Once again, quite a quintessential balanced ultimate I think for assassins. It's single target, but it does a lot of damage, has a bit of CC, and sets up quite well for Loki's kit in that it puts you in the backstab position and you can immediately auto attack them and things like that. Nothing insane, but definitely good in the context of Loki's kit. 
Mercury, A+. So this ultimate is sort of semi-global, but sort of not in a way. Because you can come flying up a lane from miles away with this, but you can't gank out of the jungle with it, and since Mercury is a main jungler, it's kind of difficult to use it in that way. But you can't really deny the power of being able to travel 500 units straight up a lane, stun someone, spin them around and disorient them, and do a lot of damage in the process. Nijar ultimate, A tier. Once again, this is quite a quintessential balanced ultimate, I think. It can do quite a hell of a lot of damage, it's one of the best setup abilities in the game, throwing someone up into the air and just have a solar ultimate waiting for them as they come down is incredibly powerful. But it is just single target and can sometimes be quite hard to hit on targets that are duking it properly, which is why I think it's just balanced. Nemesis, S tier. I was considering putting this one in S plus as well, but when I compared it to some of the other ultimates that I had in S plus, I don't think it's quite as powerful as those. But this is definitely an upper S tier, I think. Basically nothing else in the game does what Nemesis ultimate does for the team. Being able to shred those protections from an enemy is just so incredibly powerful. Just having your protections annihilated and moving at almost no speed at all while Nemesis gets bonus protections and runs at you at light speed is just insane. It can take a lot of coordination and good teamwork to make Nemesis Ultimate as powerful as it possibly can be, but even on a team without amazing comms, if you just Nemesis ult someone and your team realise you've done it and they focus them down, it's one of the most powerful ultimates in the game. Pele, A tier. So a pretty long range dash that does good damage, I could also hit multiple people with the cone damage as well, but to be honest most of the damage is single target coming from the dash. Also you can use it to run away if you need to, and it also has CC immunity so you can dodge like Ares ultimates and things with it, but if you're using it that way it's kind of a waste since Pele likes to play very aggressive. But overall I think this one's just a pretty fair ultimate. Ratatoska, S tier. So I was talking about Mercury having a semi-global ultimate that can't really gank from the jungle, Ratatoska has a semi-global ultimate that can gank from the jungle and it's really powerful. Even when you just consider like single target application to this ability, just ganking like a solo laner or a mid laner or something, being able to come flying out of the jungle and knock someone up, especially if they don't see it coming, is just ridiculous. But if you manage to hit multiple people with this, like if you're on a gank on duo lane or something and you hit two people, or you just engage on a team fight and hit two or three people, this ultimate is insane. Raven ultimate, also S tier. This one's very different to Ratatoska, but I think almost as powerful. This is probably a lower S tier, I think. Just the amount of stuff this ability does is completely insane. Granted, it's not going to be a massive AoE hitting a bunch of people in a teamfight CC type of ability. It's definitely more of a single target, I'm going to annihilate this one person type ability. Making Raven take reduced damage, the enemy it hits take increased damage, doing a shit ton of damage to them, and also being a CC immune leap that you can use to get away or chase if you need to. This ability just does a lot of things in the context of killing one person, and it's very powerful. Circuit, A+. So I did have this one in S, but I moved it down since it is more of sort of a narrower application than something like a Ratatoska or a Raven ultimate that's always going to be powerful. So the 600 plus true damage on Circuit ultimate is always going to be powerful, so I just kind of contradicted myself there, but the anti-heal is the thing that's more situational on this ability. If you're picking Circuit into a team with absolutely no healing, it's just a short duration CC and throw with some unmitigatable damage, which in my opinion is a pretty balanced ultimate. But if you then throw Circuit onto a team as a counter pick against something like a Sylvanas, so he can't heal and he's locked in place and you can throw him into your team, then it becomes really powerful. So situationally, Circuit ultimate could be S tier, but I think overall it's A tier, so I've dropped it in A+. Set ultimate. This one, I honestly don't really have any idea where to place it. I don't play too much set myself, and I don't really see him played all that much, except for by a few people. So I don't really know how to rate this one, so let me know down in the comments how you would rate set ultimate. It seems like it can be really insane when you're spawning like 6 clones and you skewer someone for almost 2000 damage, but I'm not sure if that's a realistic application of the ability or not. And just taking the base of what it does with the attack speed on cap on the passive and the healing and the damage it does, it doesn't seem that amazing, but if you take into account the clones that it spawns, it does seem quite strong. Onto Susano's ultimate, A+, plus, I think. So while it does take a while to charge, a big damage massive AoE knockup is really hard to understate in a teamfight. Even in single target applications, being able to just put this down on someone, they're stuck in there, you can beat them down and then knock them up afterwards, it's really strong. To be honest, I think this one's very high A tier, bordering on S tier. The only reason it's not S tier is because of the charging mechanic. Back in the day with Susano Ultimate, when you could deploy it and instantly fire it for the knockup, it would definitely be S tier, I think. But for now, it's A+. Plus. Thanatos, S tier. So this is an execute which is incredibly hard to rate badly, because an execute no matter what the time in the game is always going to be strong and it keeps Thanatos relevant, well kind of relevant, into the endgame. Being able to take someone out at 40% health is just completely insane, especially if using that to like focus down a tank, you're probably doing upwards of a thousand damage with this ability to that tank, and while you can just use this as a generic semi-global ultimate where you can dive down on someone and stun them, that's not really the best use of it, you really want to be executing people. 
But even throughout the early game, you can just use this as mobility and dive on someone for the stun to confirm death scythe. You don't really need to execute people as much in the early game with this. But as I said, it's hard to underrate and execute this also a semi-global mobility. And speaking of semi-global mobility, the final ultimate we have to rank is Thor, which I'm putting in S+. I think before Thor's changes, this ultimate would just be S tier, but with the changes, it goes up to S+. Obviously, insanely quick semi-global ultimate with CC immunity and a long duration self-banish if you need to use it that way, plus a decent sized AoE stun with an absolute shit ton of damage on this ability. The damage that it does baseline is pretty decent, a lot better than something like Thanatos ultimate because of course that executes, but then you also get the chain lightning damage on all of your abilities and auto attacks afterwards, which just ups Thor's damage completely off the charts. This ultimate is completely insane and is potentially the best ultimate here. Hunbats and Thor are definitely competing for the best assassin ultimate right now, in my opinion. And that's all the assassins and where I think they lie based on their ultimates. If you have a different opinion, then of course feel free to share it down below, it'd be interesting to see that. And if you've watched this far, then you probably enjoyed the video, so don't forget to drop a like and subscribe before you leave. Well that's about it from me, have a great day, and peace out you nerds.